the haunting abandoned island in the middle of NYC you'd never believe that there was an abandoned island in the heart of New York City, would you? L. There is. In a city where real estate prices and the underlying cost of land are astronomically high, there's one place where the developers still can't tread, North Brother Island. North Brother Island has an interesting history as a sanitarium, a rehab center for typhoid fever and smallpox victims and a housing site for veterans. But today, it is being slowly reclaimed by the roots of the Erie Island as an important bird breeding habitat. The river that isn't a river the East River of New York is where you'll find our abandoned island but what you may not know is that the East River isn't a river at all. It's a tidal estuary and is purely salt rather than fresh water. It runs from Long Island Sound at its northern tip and stops at Upper New York Bay at the southernmost point. For a long period of time it was the heart of the maritime trade in New York and it was once the busiest sea lane in the city. This is, of course, no longer the case and the East River is far less busy today. Tuberculosis Pavilion Today here we see the Tuberculosis Pavilion wing that was added on in 1941 in its current state. It's hard to imagine that this building with busted windows and growing vines once saved thousands of lives that were suffering from the awful disease of tuberculosis, isn't it? With one of the most difficult recovery processes in medicine, victims of the disease were quarantined off in these quarters as they remained infectious until complete recovery. Although at the time the wing was very much necessary, the superstructure was soon rendered useless due to the introduction of vaccination programs and effective antibiotic treatments. It was closed just two years after its arrival. An inside look with a quick sneak peek at the horrible destruction that overcame the once clean and neat walls of the pavilion, it resembles the aged rubble of a war zone after an explosion. Considering the wing was not used after 1945, the collected dust, rust and antique furniture is quite astounding. Although both residents and tourists have known about the abandoned location for years, the lack of graffiti to the foundation across the island is quite remarkable. Even with broken windows due to the forceful nature of the constantly growing vines, or random visitors, people have relatively kept their appropriate distance when visiting. An earthy floor Another room inside the pavilion wing displays a somewhat earthy texture covering the grounds, matching the rest of the island. With roots busting from the cracks of the floor, it's strange to think that none of this decor existed over 40 years ago. Take a close look at the intense damage on both the surface and interior of the walls and ceiling. Less than 50 years before, this wing was dedicated to improving and saving the infected lives of those suffering from the disease. And, now we see almost a garden-like setting surrounded by the ruins of a foundation that has still managed to stay somewhat intact. The X-ray room formerly the X-ray portion of the pavilion has now become a tile sanctuary on the first floor of the medical wing. The control room on the adjacent left side does not reveal as much damage as you would expect, but the wall has significantly taken a beating. Once yellow tinted from the ceramic tiles overlapping one another, has revealed square lead blocks that line the now exposed surface of the demolished walls. Again water damage is found when looking at the upper walls and ceilings toward the right of the room, although we are surprised that this room stayed intact at all over the years. An abandoned auditorium one of the most momentous rooms left on the island, still left to its crumbling roots, is the auditorium located in the North Brother School that was originally the island services building. As an environment that once functioned in the benefit of the children and teachers, parcels of collapsed and destroyed furniture remain along. The grounds of the room. If these corroded walls could speak, we wonder what they would reveal about this former services chamber. Most likely used to collect the hundreds of sick children that inhabited the island, the institution was once vital to the system implemented on the abandoned piece of land. One for the books covering a majority of floors, abused and abandoned books lay with lost and meaningless words that once meant everything to the residents and employees of the island. Here we see what is left of of the children's ward, which was later turned into a library and annex after the tuberculosis pavilion was turned into a drug treatment center. As previously mentioned, when the victims of tuberculosis were being seen for treatment, their highly contagious natures kept them under constant supervision until the disease was entirely treated. 
with what could range from months to years. The children must have felt quite restless and likely used books as their main source of entertainment. With this logic, it makes total sense to have turned this section of the island into a library. A single hoop in this room we see the remains of a former recreation center. If you look closely you can see that the patients enjoyed the great game of basketball while admitted in the hospital. Just as educational activities such a reading were provided as sources of pleasure, sports were not counted out during the time period. It was the collective hope of the staff that creating an athletic atmosphere would aid the addiction-riddled population of the community. Just beyond the subtle hole in the gym's wall was the lavatory that you can even tell from here has suffered from massive, water damage over the years. Holy, mossy remains it is hard to make out that this used to be the island's second chapel. Now one standing wall, bits of the floor and a moss-covered tree, the chapel has almost completely disappeared. Made of wood, the structure has practically vanished into the aggressively growing forest that is slowly swallowing the island whole. A community built under such stress and heartbreaking and life-threatening conditions surely needed a source of faith and prayer. Which is why they had to. Although the establishment looks as if it was never valued, we understand that the city was nothing without it. Now that we have seen what North Brother has become today, let's take a look back on its interesting history. Origin of North Brother While North Brother Island was in use, the victims of smallpox would only remain on the island while they were in their contagious period or they would be buried there. Once they had recovered they were permitted to leave the island and return home. A program of vaccination based on the work of Edward Jenner, who had discovered that infection with, although the establishment looks as if it was never valued, we understand that the city was nothing without it. Now that we have seen what North Brother has become today, let's take a look back on its interesting history. Origin of North Brother While North Brother Island was in use, the victims of smallpox would only remain on the island while they were in their contagious period or they would be buried there. Once they had recovered they were permitted to leave the island and return home. A program of vaccination based on the work of Edward Jenner, who had discovered that infection with, a weak version of the disease, cowpox provided an effective barrier that prevented people from catching full-blown smallpox, had been run out worldwide and effectively eliminated the disease globally. Smallpox victims could be removed from the city and placed in the sanitarium on the island where they would be cared for by medical staff who had already suffered from and recovered from the disease. Typhoid and the island typhoid, unlike smallpox, is a peculiar disease that breeds a much smaller amount of casualties. Although, it kills 10% of victims or more if left untreated. It is caused by a particular strain of the Salmonella bacteria called Salmonella typhi. Most people when infected with Salmonella typhi become sick shortly afterwards. They develop a fever, typhoid fever from which the disease takes its name, and then a rash followed by a wide range of fairly unpleasant complications. Assuming that the person makes it through three weeks of infection, then it is likely that the disease will be beaten off by the body's immune system and the victim will return to health. However, there are some rare people that don't get sick from Salmonella typhi. The island's most infamous resident, Typhoid Mary Mary Mellon didn't get sick from Salmonella typhi. Instead, she found herself as an asymptomatic carrier of the disease. What that means is that Mary would never get sick from typhoid but was able to infect other people by passing on her infection. She became known as Typhoid Mary for the large numbers of people that she infected in New York while working as a cook. She refused to believe that she was responsible for the outbreaks and she was eventually forcibly quarantined on North Brother Island for more than 20 years after refusing to stop working as a cook. Typhoid Mary dies on the island Mary Mellon's legacy is a harsh one. The infections that she caused because of her refusal to believe that she was a typhoid carrier, killed at least three people. However, it's estimated that she may have been the cause of over 50 deaths as tracking her total impact on public health was mired with problems. In 1932, Mary was working as a technician on the island when she had a stroke which left her completely paralyzed. She died in 1938 of pneumonia. After her death, an autopsy discovered typhoid bacteria still happily living in her gallbladder. This was 100% proof of her carrier status. 
tuberculosis another serious problem tuberculosis another serious disease treated on the island is a bacterial infection which causes the destruction of lung tissue it is spread from person to person by airborne means the disease can be vaccinated against and the vaccine is highly effective however again due to the costs of vaccination programs many people are not immunized against tuberculosis even today people who smoke or who have hiv are particularly at risk of become infected with tuberculosis the disease can be treated through the use of antibiotics but there are growing numbers of antibiotic resistant tuberculosis and in 2014 nearly 10 million people contracted tuberculosis and nearly 1.5 million people died of it not just a sanitarium in the last years of its existence however north brother island became more than a treatment facility it became a home to service people and their families like this attic room that still remains intact world war ii had taken its toll on many people and war veterans often found themselves struggling as the diseases that north brother island was built to defend against went into decline in america the island was used to assist those in need of housing it would have been an attractive place dotted with roads, lawns and buildings and families would have thronged the streets, enjoying the facilities of their new New York home. The end of an era North Brother Island began to fall into disuse in the 1950s. The residents felt that it was impractical to live on the island and work in New York, which required an irregular ferry service to shuttle them back and forth. The city, on the other hand, was more concerned about the costs of maintaining North Brother Island. There was plenty of cheap real estate on the mainland back then and the city was subsidizing the ferry service. It was decided to relocate the remaining families and heroin rehab patients back to New York proper and to abandon the island to nature. The island today fast forward 40 years to vines spread across the island engulfing the building slowly but surely. This island was forgotten for quite a while. In the 70s, it became a popular boating spot where light vandalization did occur to the 26 individual foundations that are found on the island. However, within the last 11 years or so, the island along with 17 of the other islands surrounding the state of New York, has been used by the New York City Audubon as a weather bird breeding environment. The bird sanctuary now a colonial weather bird nesting habitat for black crown night herons and other species of its nature, North Brother is a site for breeding bird activity along with its South Brother Maid Island that are both very sensitive to the public. Seeing that the buildings have been significantly soiled by nature itself, the physical atmosphere of the island is just too perfect to not be utilized as a bird sanatorium. Although, sadly as it once was home for these types of birds, in more recent years a significant decline in breeding has been found. The General Slocum disaster North Brother Island's tragedy wasn't limited to the deaths caused by illnesses like typhoid and smallpox. It was also the setting for a horrible, freak accident that caused the death of over 1,000 people. On June 15, 1904 the P.S. Slocum, a sidewheel passenger ship, was chartered by the St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church for $350. It was supposed to be a fun-filled day outside of the city for the passengers of the ship, which included mostly women and children from the German-American community of the Lower East Side. The ship was supposed to travel from New York City to the north shore of Long Island, but it would never make it there. A fire broke out on the General Slocum as the P.S. Slocum made its way up the East River. Things turned badly almost immediately. While no one is exactly sure how the fire broke out, we do know that it spread rapidly within a half hour of leaving the dock at around 9 a.m. Most of the passengers on the ship couldn't swim. A panic broke out as the passengers faced either being burned alive or drowning. Captain William Henry Van Schaik steered the ship towards North Brother Island. But it was too late. Only 321 passengers would survive out of the 1,358 on board. The final death count totaled 1,021, and many of the bodies washed up on shore within the next week. This disaster was the next largest death toll in the United States next to 9-11. The aftermath of the General Slocum tragedy Captain William Henry Van Skake was held responsible for the accident. It was widely reported that he didn't bring the ship to shore for insurance reasons. Onlookers could see the burning ship just offshore and wondered why he didn't come back to land. 
instead of turning around and docking the ship, he sailed it to North Brother Island. According Van Skake, gas tanks and lumber yards near 130th Street, where the boat was burning right offshore, made docking there dangerous. Van Skake was found guilty of criminal negligence because he failed to maintain the fire drills required by law. He was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor, and ended up serving only a portion of his sentence at Sing Sing Prison. He was pardoned by President William Howard Taft in 1911. The nurse's home The nurse's home had stunning architectural features like the cast iron staircase that still stands today. This staircase connected three contiguous floors on the oldest portion of the nurse's home. Today, the nurse's home is one of the creepier buildings on the island. Radio Lab who managed to visit the island in 2011, saw something rather unsettling within the crumbling walls. The building may have been taken over by nature, but humans were definitely there in the sort of recent past. The outer door was perforated with bullet holes, but these bullet holes weren't entrance. Wounds. Someone was shot at from inside the nurse's home. What exactly happened remains a mystery. Vines threaten the bird and tree population The southern side of the nurse's home is completely covered in vines. It's almost hard to tell that the building exists at all. Unfortunately, as nature takes back the land, it also threatens the natural tree and heron population. The wall pictured above is covered with kadzu, a type of vine that's not native to the island. This is, of course, impacting the structural stability of the building. But what does it matter if it's completely uninhabited? The problem here is that kadzu is suffocating the native trees that grow on the island. It's also threatening the homes and breeding patterns of the herons that live there. Odds and ends in the maintenance building Perhaps some of the most interesting parts of exploring a forgotten world are the smallest details. In the above image, you can see keys that were used to access various buildings on the island. These keys were found in the maintenance building that still has various bits and bobs. As you can see, chemicals have altered the appearance of the building. The keys are rusting next to a chemical stalagmite. Within the maintenance room, you can also find a very old phone book that's almost entirely intact. The phone numbers in the book certainly don't look like the phone numbers we use today. The tuberculosis pavilion was never used for tubercular patients while the tale of typhoid Mary may have put North Brother Island on the map, it would be remiss to mention that not all the buildings were used for their intended purposes. The tuberculosis pavilion was built in 1941, but it never treated a single patient suffering from the disease. The island was abandoned before it could be used and those suffering from tuberculosis were moved to different municipal facilities. The tuberculosis hospital was used initially as a dormitory and then became the main residence and treatment building for Riverside Hospital's rehab program. Heroin addiction on North Brother Island The tuberculosis building was never used to treat tuberculosis patients and was instead used for Riverside Hospital's juvenile drug treatment program. It turns out, the building wasn't much suited for rehab. Many of the doors in the building were turned into seclusion rooms with heavy dead bolts and sheet metal reinforcement. This is how they'd treat people going through withdrawal. Drug addicted patients were locked in a seclusion room given only a bare mattress and a mess bucket. They were forced to go through withdrawal alone, and given no medicine unless the situation was life-threatening. After several days